सो हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू दिस न्यू वीडियो सो इन माई प्रीवियस वीडियो सो वी हैव डिस्कस्ड विद द इम्पॉर्टेंट एनहेंसमेंट टेक्निक अंडर द सीमॉस प्रोसेस टेक्नोलॉजी ओके एंड वी हैव सीन द पॉलिसिलिकॉन रेजिस्टेंस गेट रिडक्शन टेक्निक्स विच कम्स अंडर द एनहेंसमेंट ओनली इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो एंड ऑल्सो दैट ऑल्सो वी हैव डिस्कस्ड विद द सीमॉस फैब्रिकेशन प्रोसेस ट्विंट अप प्रोसेस पी वेल सीमॉस प्रोसेस एवरीथिंग वी हैव डिस्कस्ड इन सेपरेट वीडियोज प्लीज गो एंड वॉच इट okay it is very very important topics those things are very important under this module 3 okay so we are coming to the end of this module now around 2 to 3 videos are left of this first chapter of this module we have one more important chapter that if time permits i'm going to do okay because after this i'm going to start with module 4 so that uh, second chapter i guess i'm going to do it in the later stage so we have only 2 to 3 videos left and very important topic that is layout design rules okay so you know the formation of layouts and uh, layout formation also in one video i've already told you that how the layouts uh, how the uh, transistor is formed if you consider a schematic of an inverter i've you know taken an example of a sim- simple inverter and i've told you how the transistor is formed in the layout okay it is passed it is formed when the polysilicon layer is passed through the diffusion layer or the thin ox layer okay when those two are uh, overlapped or when those two layers are overlapped then the, the overlapping region is called as the transistor region there the transistor is formed keeping that transistor in mind we should be considering the source source gate and drain terminals with respect to the formation of transistor then connect the uh, necessary co- components at uh, which is mentioned in the schematic through the metal metal oxide layer okay to the metal layer connect it and the layouts are formed so these things are already known to you but still in this module they have mentioned the complete theory about how these things are formed okay so that i am going to discuss in the upcoming videos as well so here in this video we are going to discuss with the layout design rules okay we have some set of rules here in order to form the layout design just just for theory because these questions are very important it might be appearing okay first layout let us see what are these layout design rules layout rules which is also called as design rules are guidelines used to prepare photo masks for ic fabrication they serve as a bridge between the circuit designer and the process engineer to ensure manufacturable and functional circuits so the purpose of design rules the purpose of design rules is to maximize yield number of working chips per wafer to maximize layout area that is the compact design to maintain circuit reliability uh, the design rules aim to find a balance between performance and manufacturability that is it has uh, the uh, these have the balance between performance and manufacturing that is uh, what it does is the these layout design rules won't be uh, mismatching with the, any other design rules it has a it has a, it is you know, simply what to say a specific for a certain set of uh, layout design it won't be applicable for any other set of design okay if we have one design rule it it cannot be adopted for any other one okay so that's why uh, these aim to find balance between performance and manufacturability under that we have con- conservative rules in conservative rules we have better yield low risk of failure then we have ex- aggressive rules so these aggressive rules are some of the risky rules you know, which has to be taken when we have the transistor mismatching okay in order to balance between the transistor these ag- aggressive rules are taken that is here in this case uh, the, uh, it has a lot of disadvantages but these rules are used sometimes for smaller size better performance but higher risk as i already told you of manufacturing the defects okay what do design rules specify they impose a ge- geometric constraints on layout features such as minimum widths minimum spacing between different structures overlap and enclosure rules uh, for example how much metal must cover a contact layer to layer alignment tolerance that is the registration rules one important point to be noted is violating rules doesn't guarantee failure but frequent violations increase the chances of failure significantly so when the rules are not followed that is the rules are violated when the rules are violated it does not guarantee failure but it is if the rules are violated uh, about uh, around uh, more than one or more times then the chances of failure would be more that is the error formation would be more okay so key issues addressed by the design rules one is a reproduc- uh, uh, reproducibility of features layer interactions then problems without rules two thin lines may break may break or disconnect two close lines may short circuit 
misalignment of layers that is functional errors or open short uh, circuit formation also will be formed okay then the types of design rule systems okay so these things are very important okay you should be knowing this okay types of layout design rules first we have micron based rules okay so under this micron based rules we have it uses absolute dimensions for example 4 micrometer poly width absolute dimensions meet it it has a fixed uh, uh, set of dimension it uses that only it does not adapt with any other uh, dimensions okay one fixed dimensions would be there in order to micron based rules that is uh, 4 micrometer poly width it is commonly used in industry each rule is listed in microns for different layers okay so this micron based rules in detail it is not given in your syllabus it's not mentioned but types of design rules is mentioned so that's why i included this micron rules then we have alpha and beta rules okay it uses relative units for example alpha is for a minimum feature size and beta is for minimum grid size typically alpha and beta are scaled by a constant factor okay Next, we have lambda based design rules. So this is very, 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 very important. Lambda based design rules. Because in the syllabus, they have mentioned that this is there in depth also. They have mentioned it that this uh, study of lambda based rules should be uh, uh, covered. So that's why in the next video or this video only, I'm going to discuss that as well. Okay. Lambda based rules. So the lambda based rules are popularized by Med and Conway. All dimensions are defined as multiples of lambda, which is a scalable unit. It is good for teaching and academic prototyping. So the advantages, some of the advantages of lambda rules are it is scalable across processes. Simple to understand. It can fit in one page. Okay. First order scaling. That is, uh, it can be easily adapted to new technologies by changing the uh, lambda factor of lambda. Note, don't confuse beta and lambda here with transistor parameters beta that is gain and lambda is the channel length modulation okay from uh, chapter 2 that is we have beta and lambda in the second chapter as gain and channel length modulation so those things are different and here the lambda based rules in module 3 are different okay so that's one uh, note uh, which should not be confusing with the module 2 lambda and beta okay in module 2 the beta is for gain and lambda is for channel length modulation so here we have uh, this table one simple table it shows how the lambda rules are derived from a typical micron rule set okay so it illustrates how one can move from absolute to scalable rules so here see your table derivation of lambda based rules from micron rules so we have your masking techniques here one is thinox polysilicon and aluminium okay the feature is a one by one for one feature we have the dimensions here for micron as well as lambda for thinox or diffusion we have minimum thinox width should be 4 micrometer under micron rule and for lambda it is 2 lambda then minimum thinox spacing that is the diffusion spacing between the uh, two layers that is uh, in order to uh, uh, the diffusion spacing between the two uh, different diffusion layers should be around 4 micrometer under micron rule and for lambda rule again it is 2 lambda then minimum P thinox to N thinox spacing, okay, that is from in order to connect from uh, PMOS to NMOS transistor, the diffusion spacing between P thinox and N thinox should be in micron rule should, should be 8 micrometer, then in lambda rule it is 4 lambda. Minimum poly width, the minimum width of polysilicon under this diffusion layer when the overlapping is taking place, that is 2 lambda in case of lambda rule, then in the micron rule it is 3.75 micrometer, then we have minimum uh, poly spacing. It is again 3.75 micrometer and 2 lambda in case of lambda. Then we have polysilicon. Uh, under the polysilicon masking technique, we have minimum gate poly width. Okay, that is around 4.5 micrometer under micron rule and 3 lambda under lambda rule. Then we have minimum gate poly width. Okay, in uh, that is N. That is for NMOS uh, transistors. That is in the here in for NMOS, in case of NMOS, it is 4.0. That is 4 micrometer. And again, it is 2 lambda. Minimum gate poly extension. The extension of polysilicon layer, uh, that is, uh, the, it could be extended up to 3.5 micrometer under micron rules. And for lambda based, it is 2 lambda. Okay. So, this lambda based rules we are going to see in detail in the upcoming video. Okay. Then, uh, aluminum masking. Minimum aluminum width should be 4.5 micrometer for micron. 
and 3 lambda for lambda rule. Minimum aluminium spacing is 4.5 micrometer and 3 lambda. Okay. So this table, uh, if you know this, it's well and good. You could be writing in your exam. Okay. Yeah. So here the final loads, uh, that is some summary part. Although lambda rules are useful, they may not be suitable for high performance commercial chips and area optimized designs. So this text promotes symbolic layout and tools that hide the design rules from the user for ease of design. Okay. Next, these layer representations, key physical features of all CMOS layouts and uh, these things and all are the other theory part, I, which I guess is not required. If time permits, I'm going to do this in the next video. Okay. Yeah. So that's all for this video, guys. In this video, we have discussed with some of the important layout design rules. What are the layout design rules and advantages, disadvantages and everything. Uh, with the compared to the masking te techniques of diffusion or thinox masking polysilicon aluminium different features for different features the dimensions based on micron rule and uh, lambda rule sets also we have discussed in this table okay so that's all for this video guys hope you understood something and uh, came to know about new things and uh, these things are very important for exam point of view because these things uh, any one of the question would be asked for 10 marks okay in uh, in detail you should be explaining in brief okay so this notes is very useful for that as well. So this note should be available in the description. Uh, access it by subscribing to our channel. Okay. Copy that link and paste it to the browser. Okay. And then subscribe to our channel and come back to that link and press the unlock link buttons. Uh, after the pressing that, the whole notes of all the five models would be available in that drive link. Okay. So go and access it, download it and read it because uh, it is very, very important. So yeah, if you understood something and if the... Uh, video is uh, useful to you all please share it with your friends guys and like this video okay that's all guys thank you we'll see you in the next video